So we are talking about the hypervigilance of terror, which is, again, a one of the consequences of trauma. Um, we talked about terror, overall terror, in the um, last video. And again, this is being broken down into four different sections. So today is the hypervigilance portion. Um, and we are about to get started. All victims of trauma feel terror and will have several responses to that terror. Two, which adoptees will certainly recognize are hypervigilance and hyperarousal. Now, again, I did do the hyperarousal earlier, so you guys can check out that section of the book. A traumatic experience is recorded in the reptilian brain as mentioned before. This is the part of the brain which deals with self-preservation or survival. The level of serotonin is reduced and adrenaline is elevated. There is a sense of being on permanent alert. As if danger, that is the trauma being surfaced, right, might return at any time. This is experienced as anxiety by many adoptees and birth mothers. Adoptees, because they have experienced it all their lives, may not even know that this is not a normal state. According to Van Der Kolk, um, he quotes, or so this is a quote from him, trauma interferes with children's capacity to regulate their arousal levels. This seems to be related to a wide spectrum of problems from learning disabilities to aggression against self and others in his 1996 book. When one senses danger at every turn, one often overreacts to stimuli. Something which would simply annoy anyone else will create a sense of danger in a trauma victim. Trauma victims tend to react rather than reflect. It is not a very good idea to surprise an adoptee. So that is true. Um, that is the end of that little chapter. But essentially, you are hyper aware of things that are going on, right? You're hyper aware. It's like walking on eggshells, right? You don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want to do the wrong thing. Um, any little thing can upset someone and, and like you get, you get upset yourself, right? Because you, you just, you just want to be, you, you don't want to be scared all the time, right? You don't want to be kind of like thrown to the wolves and essentially, Right. And we we're always even if we're not directly thinking about this, this is one of those things where, again, our body is just on high alert all the time where, you know how maybe maybe you're, you're aware, I should say, say you're in a house, right? Maybe it's a new house for you or maybe you're watching a movie about a house, right? And the house is dark and it's scary. And you hear a creak. Maybe you hear something moving or you see a shadow. It's kind of like that. Like your your body is on high alert. You are scared all the time. Now, that being said, that creak could just be the house settling in or the bang on the window could be a window branch. But that doesn't negate that fear that you then sensed. The light could be you know, something moving across, like it could be a shadow of, you know, the tree moving or, you know, a car lights, headlights, you know, passing by through the window and it hits something and creates a shadow. That fear is still there, even though it could be comp something completely sensible. So it's just one of those things that you have to understand not that you have to understand, you should understand that a trauma victim, and that's exactly what adoptees are, they're trauma victims, adoptee trauma, um, are always on alert, okay? So, like, it's just one of those things that it's very hard to get out of that sense, especially because the, the mass majority of us we're adopted from birth. So we've always been hypervigilant, even as babies. 
Even as babies, we have no control over how our body responds. We just have to recognize it. And it's tough. It's extremely tough. Anyway, I will see you guys next time for the intrusion or re-experiencing. And we're going to go even further into this sense of terror.